Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, to the public who's watching at home, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Before we start the meeting, we'll have our city clerk, Madam Sue Richards, uh, read our quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. To effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. I'll call the 24th regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sagali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? 16 present. Quorum is present. I'd ask uh, Alderman Meyer to lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. <coughs> President Grau. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that uh, we approve the minutes of the previous meeting of the Common Council and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments, City Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Charter Communications Refranchising Advisory Committee. Uh, all the person, Dennis Bauman, Susan Hart, Mayoral Assistant, Carrie Kautzer, Director of TV8, Andrew Bubb, Citizen, and Timothy Elvis, Citizen. All terms shall automatically dissolve upon the execution of a contract between the City of Sheboygan and Charter Communications signed by the Mayor. Those appointments will lie over. And the Building Use Committee, all the person, Gene Kittleson, term expiring 4 <coughs> Joseph Clark, Carl Rigotti, and Cameron Stewart, terms expiring 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. I ask for a motion to confirm. So move, Your Honor. Motion to second to confirm. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Appointments are confirmed. <laughs> Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Yes, first on the list is Milton Storm. If you would please come up to the microphone. <clears throat> and Mr. Storm, can I have your home address, please? Yes, this is 1736 Marvin Court. Marvin Court? And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. I want to thank Sue Richards and uh, the Honorable Mayor Perez and the distinguished members of the Common Council for giving me this time to uh, speak. You could title my dissertation, Freedom of Speech. The first item I would like to uh, address is the astute, nasty letters to the editor criticizing WHBL radio and talk show hosts falsely. The second item is uh, RC 2439 on page six of tonight's agenda. The Honorable Mayor Perez versus former Alderman Bonet. As Congressman Sensenberg said at the impeachment of now citizen William Jefferson Clinton, a Democrat, what chance do the poor and the weak have against the rich and the powerful in a court of law? In 1948, when I attended the University of Wisconsin Extension up in Maryland, Wausau area, I studied how to write letters to the editor of a newspaper. It is a right and a privilege as a freedom of speech. As with free speech and writing letters to the editor comes responsibility, honesty, humbleness, and yes, truthfulness. Truthfulness may not always be beautiful, but then there is no beauty in untruthfulness. The dispute between the arrogance of the Honorable Mayor and former Alderman Bonet and letter writers against WHBL seems to be smell of a rancid odor. I will try to watch my language for fear of being bleeped or gaveled. Whatever happened to freedom of speech? Is that why we find language at bowling alleys, pubs, and yes, even public streets? 
The dispute between the mayor and the distinguished honorable former Alderman Bonet could have been avoided if the mayor had listened to me when I called him personally on the phone. I had written a letter to the editor about this matter, but the Sheboygan Press failed to publish it. Same on the press. I told the honorable mayor that the Bonet was willing to forgive and forget. I told the mayor also that he could demonstrate the same type of character by saying he also was sorry and stopped the silliness he was displaying. That is when he went into a tirade and said he did nothing wrong, blamed everything on the former alderman and said to me, I'm going to sue him. After months of bickering, acting like a spoiled child, the mayor is now passing the buck to eight members of the council and five others and blaming them. With District Attorney Joe Jekyll's decision still will not admit that he had been wrong, wasting a million dollars worth of taxpayers' money. With some citizens of Sheboygan, mostly Democrats, I do not understand what is wrong with the freedom of speech of W.H. Bell's excellent broadcasters. I suggest they read Jeffrey McAndrews' book that can be found in the Mead Public Library. Maybe Mary Lou Donahue and Sharon Winkle would be interested in reading it too. Jeffrey McAndrews' youngest son is a special child, just as my son was. He has an article in here and it's named, uh, If Tomorrow Never Comes, and I'd like to read it. If I knew it was the last time I would be there to share your day, well, I'm sure you'll have so many more, so I can let this one just slip away. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, young or old alike, and today may be the last chance you get to hold your one tight. Then you surely will regret the gray that you didn't take the extra time for a smile, a hug, or a kiss, and you were just too busy to grant someone what turned out to be their last wish. Take time to say I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, or it's okay. And if tomorrow never comes, you'll have no regrets about today. And in closing, a statement I used as a prayer at the budget crunch meeting and spiritual gra gra gathering at St. Luke United Methodist Church. I preface this book well, what I told Congressman Sensenbrenner many years ago. You will never change anything unless you sh show a change of attitude and you change your way of thinking. God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and give me the courage to change the things that I can and that need to be changed. And give me the wisdom and understanding to know the difference between the two of them. Thank you for listening and hopefully the citizens of this citizen can avoid and survive a recall if it occurs if it occurs. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> As always, it's, uh, it's important that there be a point of clarification uh, when statements are made, such as tonight. <clears throat> I think it's important for this council to remember, and it's important for the community to know, that I did not vote in that decision. There was eight aldermen who voted to send that complaint to the district attorney. If you get down to the nitty-gritty and dissect the support, some people may say that four of those aldermen have been, in large part, supporters of mine, although at many times they haven't supported some of my initiatives, and that's okay, because that's the way it should be. But if four aldermen are considered to be my supporters, where did the other four come from? There was at least eight people that felt they needed to move forward, and that's what they did. It wasn't me. And people need to understand that the mayor did not vote and did not send that out to the district attorney's <coughs> office. So it is incorrect and it is inappropriate to insinuate or to make that outright accusation against me. The next thing that I would like to inform the, the public and the council with respect to similar issues is that there has been a lot of commotion that perhaps Alderman Groff was involved in some impropriety I don't believe that there was ever any impropriety, but I think it also should, something should be done to prove a point and to ease the community and let the community know that we will work as fair as we possibly can when the circumstances and the issues allow us. So I will be documenting everything that occurred from the beginning of the non-renewal of the Chamber of Commerce contract to the point where we created the tourism department and to the point where uh, Ms. Groff was hired. And all those details will be put in the form of a letter and they will be forwarded to the district attorney for his review. And hopefully we will have a review from him, a response from him soon 
so that these issues that keep interrupting our management and our operations can be put to rest. They may be glorifying, they may be sensational, but all they do is get in our way. All they do is get in your way. We cannot allow this to continue. So the issue is that Alderman Groff is being prefer given preferential treatment. I can assure you he is not. And I will forward that letter within the next two days to the district attorney and ask him to quickly act on it so that we can put this matter to rest once and for all so that this council can get to work and do the work the public elected us to do. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam City Clerk, next one. Uh, next on the list is Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? 1619 North 38th Street, Sheboygan, and that's the town of Sheboygan. Thank you, and you will have five minutes. Okay. I'm here to, today to speak on open government and um, by, when I say that, I, I mean by having citizens from the public to actually be able to attend meetings, to, you know, ha have public comment. And the reason I say that is, you know, there's reasons why you have open meeting laws and why you have basic reasons of why you're allowed to go into closed sessions when you do go into closed session. And I think the reason that that, that is that way is because you want the public to get as much information as possible, to have access to any discussion that's being discussed for if it's taxation or if it's a project that's being developed, that you should be able to have public input, and even if you don't have public input, to be able to have the public to at least listen to the discussions that are being held. I know not too long ago there was a comment that was made by the mayor which basically said that you should not conduct council business at a radio station. And I think that cuts both ways. You, that's right, you shouldn't be doing council business outside these council chambers. And that means not only at a radio station, but that means that if you're meeting outside these chambers, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, one or two people, if you're discussing council business and, and working on that, the public doesn't have access to that. Uh, you may say, well, you know what? We're not breaking the open meetings law because you know there wasn't a public quorum at these meetings and there were only a couple aldermen there. Uh, that really doesn't change things because what happens is the general public can't attend these meetings. I mean, where are they posted? Uh, they're not in the newspaper, they're not at the radio station. I'm pretty sure that you're not just gonna make over open invitations to anybody to attend these meetings. So it's important that you keep this in mind that council business should be conducted in the council chambers and also in the council committees that are, that are developed. There's a reason why you have committees, standing committees that discuss various issues that you have various aldermen that are on there and that's to conduct the business of the city of Sheboygan in those, in those committee meetings and not to be uh, meeting outside of those meetings and, and conducting business and then coming back and actually having your mind made up of what you're going to do because what happens is the public does not have access to that. Again, uh, there's some times where you want public input and you actually open up the floor or you ask for public comment like today in this, in this area. You also ask for public input through referendums. It's important that you keep this in mind that when you're, you're conducting business that it should be conducted in these chambers here. And um, the other thing I wanted to speak on was also to be able to accept other people's opinion and criticism on issues that, uh, that you may not agree on. And I say this because there's been issues, I know there was a, a perfect example is a flyer that was mailed out for Alderman Bonnie Serta. I mean, as disgusting as it can be, it happened. Um, someone didn't agree with, with, with her, her views, and what happened, this is what you get. Um, I read the paper on Sunday, and one of the things that came to mind of this was about former Alderman Menard, 
which basically one of the things that caught my mind in this was, and, and, and I'll read it, it says, in an interview published shortly after the August 21st retirement, Menard said she was proud of how she had represented her constituents. I never made a deal with anyone, she told the Sheboygan Press. So what happens is you can agree and disagree, you can talk about compromise, but do it within these chambers. And again, um, issues that people don't agree with, I think that uh, it, it, it's far, far from doing the types of things, like I said, with, with Bonnie Serta, and also the little poison pen letters that I've gotten at my home um, regarding certain things at our building. Um, you know what? You hurt the people that are in our building. You are not hurting me. Um, if you want or you disagree with something that I say, and if it's either here or out in the public, come to my office, call me on the phone. If you don't know where I work, the address is 1428 North 9th Street. I'm in the Anna Rice St. Nicholas Hospital building. Mm -hmm. I'm on the second floor east Would you side. Like a little extra time? Can I have a little bit of extra time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you, can, you can come and see me. If you disagree with what I have to say, come and see me. If you, if you don't like what I say, call me. My telephone number is 453-9444. Don't send anonymous little poison pen letters to the police department and to, to us. And, you know, I say, come and see me. But I know that these people won't do it because they're, they're cowards. They're people that do not have scruples, that lurk in the shadows like the bigots and spew their venom. And like I said, if you have a problem with what I stand and the issues that I support, come and see me personally. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And thank you, Mr. Capitello, Mr. Storm. Thank you for addressing the council tonight. <coughs> Next item we have is the mayor's comments. There's two items that I'll be briefly touching on. The first item will be the house numbering ordinance that's in effect. <coughs> and along with that ordinance and that, uh, those comments, we will have a, a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation done by our inspections department. And then I'll be talking about the city code update initiative that sort of ties into that. But before we have that presentation, I just wanted to make a few comments regarding the housing numbering, numbering ordinance. This pertains to the tiles. There's tiles that are required by ordinance to be above your door for safety reasons, and all that will be explained to you tonight. Uh, last week, there were some uh, notices posted on their doors, or either that or sent out via email, and some people got those notices and were uh, upset because they were being asked to comply with the ordinance. I can understand sometimes people becoming upset because they're making me do it. Why not the other people? Why not on that other side of town? Why not on this side of town and so forth? But it's not something that's being done to single people out. There's a city ordinance in place. It will be enforced. There's other city ordinances in place. They too will be enforced and they will be enforced fairly and equitably. No one is going to be singled out. I will say also, as, as a brief update, since June 05 to, to today, there were about 255 letters sent regarding the same issue. So it's not something that happened last week. It's not something that happened last month. It's something that happened since 05 in June up until today. There were a total of 255 letters sent out, letters asking people to comply with the number, lumbering ordinance. 44 second letters were sent out and 173 people came in and bought numbers. So it's not something that happened last week. It's not something that happened to single anybody out. It's not something that happened to punish anybody for it because if that's what it was, I got punished. They made me put numbers in front of my house too. 10 years ago, my house was recited. They yanked the numbers up, out never were put back on because guess what? The mayor got to put them back on and I bought them here too. So it's not something that people that are, are uh, 
inspections department is singling anybody out. And I will ask the alderman, I appreciate your concern and your and you, and you being thoughtful about caring for your constituents, but if there's an issue that deals with some of the people that I have to, to, to work with and represent, and not represent, but manage, that are under the hierarchy of, the, of the, the mayor, please talk to me. There's no need, there's no need to jump on the staff. I'll take that beating myself. You can jump on me if you want to. But my staff, the staff, your staff, is doing the best they can to enforce the ordinances, to do a good job, and by golly, I admire them and I respect them for that. <coughs> Larry, with that being said, would you please step up? Yes. You can't lift it, you gotta slide it. There you go. There we go. Just this one here. Uh, okay. You want the other one? Turn the other one off. There you go. Is that better? Thank you, Your Honor, and members of council. We appreciate just the time to uh, explain our house numbering system and the importance of that. Can you get that closer? Uh, the importance of our house numbering system. The primary responsibility of the building inspection department, as it always is, is the life safety issues of the city uh, residents. And uh, we have come to expect, when we call 911, that the police or fire or ambulance is going to be there within six minutes or a reasonable response time. And the numbering system is part of that. We expect uh, homeowners to have numbers on their house so they can find the houses in uh, short order when, you, when there's an emergency. So. Um, Mayor Perez asked us to put together a short presentation on the house numbering system and why we, we do that. Um, over the past couple of years, we've noticed that uh, many of the houses in the city don't follow our, our numbering system. And the requirement is that you buy the tiles by us and you put them on the front door and the side of the door. And we'll explain that as we go along. Um, as Mayor said, we have sent out about 250 letters. Um, and we're going to probably be sending out about four times that as we drive around the city. We can see there's at least that many or more that are not in compliance. So with that, I'll ask Pat or Matt to start the uh, PowerPoint for us. Um, we've just got the, the housing uh, numbering system has been enacted since 1944. So we've had the system in place for 60 years. Um, and uh, the chapter is municipal code. It establishes uniform numbering system of houses. It establishes how the house numbers are to be assigned location, the physical characteristics of the actual numbers, and where the numbers are to be placed on the building. Under this article, uh, the numbers and holders shall be uniform throughout the city, shall be procured from the city, and costs paid for by the property owner. I have a set here. This is what they look like. They're available from our office. Um, this set with four numbers and the, and the frame is $9.50. So it's not a, a, a huge cost to the taxpayer. Um, and if you get three numbers, it's less. And so they are available through our office only. That's the only place you can get them because they are reflective at night and we'll have an ex explain that as we go along. The location of the number shall be conspicuously placed immediately above, on, or at the side of the proper door, which is the main door of your house, which is located <coughs> on the front facing the street, so that the number can be plain seen plainly from the street. That's very important for the emergency uh, workers to find that. Why, why we have uniform numbering? Of course, the emergency service is the number one issue that we have. Uh, planning and zoning, zoning, utility service, gas company and power company would like to know where you are. Navigation, if someone's visiting the city looking for your house, they need to know how to find it quickly and record keeping for the assessors for building inspection, everybody else who's looking for your house in the city. Now we have some pictures of non-conforming houses. We just randomly, Matt randomly took some pictures um, around the city. You take a look at this one. Uh, it's pretty difficult to see. On the right side of the door, it's a brass on a, on a yellow house. If you were looking for that at night or even during the day, you can see it's very difficult to locate. Uh, this one, if you look on the, the post on the left side of the porch, uh, it says 920, but it's very difficult to see even during the day. You, can, you have a hard time. These are taken from the street. 
So this one is a brown letters on a brown house, very difficult to see at night especially. Um, they have the, the, uh, the written letters. They're okay, you can put them on, but you must have the, the city numbers. Uh, you can always put your vanity numbers on, you can put anything on that you want, as long as you have the city numbers to go with them. This was one someone put, purchased that has a, just a stick on to the siding. Um, it's not legal. It's pop, you can see it during the day, but at night it would not be reflective. This one is on a mailbox. If you take a look, it's on the side. If you're driving down the street, there's no numbers on the front of the house. Someone chose to put it on a mailbox, which you couldn't find at night also. Here's uh, an, an example of what Mayor Perez said. Someone painted their house, took the numbers off. You can see where they were on the left side of the door, and they're gone. This is also the black on white stick on letters. You can get it at most of the home, home centers, but that's not uh, reflective at night. Same situation here. Similar brass letters on a brown house. This looks nice right now, and it, it probably could be easily found, but it's not part of our uniform system. Same situation. This one is in the bottom of the door. You can see it's 531, very, very hard to see on the screen door. This is the old existing tile that has been in place since 1944. When we used to sell them in our office, they were ceramic tiles, actually. They're not as reflective as they are now, but they are still legal if you have them on your house. The intent was to have a porch light. If you turn your porch light on, you can see them that way. They're, they're pretty good. At least they're at the side of the door. This one says it's on the door, 2412 on the bottom. It's technically legal, but it's really not a good place to find it. If you have snow on the porch or something, you really couldn't locate it in, in a quick way. This one, Matt took from the street. That's a typical uh, the porcelain tile that we have. It, you can still see it if you're shining a flashlight at it from the streets. But, so that, that's okay to have it on your house, although the newer ones are much better when we get there. That's, that's the new tiles I just held up, that one, two, three, four. You can see that the flashlight is not even shining on it. It's taken from 60 feet away. And look at, how, look at the difference. If you were an ambulance driver, what that would make a difference to find that place in, in minutes. This is taken from 150 feet away, put it on his garage from the street, and you can still see it, and even the flashlight is not on it. So this is uh, directly illuminated without, the flashlight is off to the side, there's not even light on it. You can still see how these new, new tiles shine. So that's why it's very important that we have them on the building correctly. Um, these, we just got a couple pictures of the newer houses that have the vanity numbers. Some of the newer ones in the subdivision like having those on, but yet they have the house numbers that go with it. You can see there it's 5004 and they have them in the brick. They look nice, but you still must have the, the city numbers. This house under construction, you can see the contractor just put it on the side for now until he uh, finished construction. At least that way the, the contractor could find them. And also when, when anyone takes a building permit out in the city for a new house, we give them the numbers with it. We charge for them. So every contractor that gets a house, uh, uh, any building, even when Blue Harbor was built, every one of those uh, condos had eight numbers, so we, we provided them for them. And from planning inspection perspective, we'd like to continue with the current ordinance and not have it changed. Uh, you may install vanity plates, numbering, but uh, uniform numbers must be displayed in accordance with the ordinance, and uniform numbering is essential to conducting department operations. Um, Deputy Chief Sharp is here. He would like to speak uh, briefly on, on the importance for the fire department to look at this. And also Deputy Chief Weiss is here also. He would like to speak in the perspective of the police department. Thank you, Larry. The fire department does support this concept. In fact, in the commercial buildings and the residential three units or more where we regularly do fire inspections, we have enforced this for a long time. But the concern is in the residential areas, the one and two family homes that do not get regular fire inspections. It's very, very important that we know what to look for and where to look for it. You might ask why, and just a couple comments and points that I'd like to make up. First of all, it's not only for your home, it's for your neighbors. As we approach homes, we're coming down the street and we're starting to look for addresses before we actually get to the block or the part of the block where we're going. We look for numbers as so we know exactly how close we're getting. Why do we do this? In case of a fire, this is a very important fact, if there's a fire at your home and we're responding with our trucks from several different stations, they don't just end up in front of your house in some kind of a random order. There's a system to what we do. We pull an engine company past the house, we stop one of our truck companies right in front, the company that might be making the fire hydrant comes from the other direction and lays hose. 
if the first unit that's at this residence overshoots this house and stops past it further than they want to, that can have an adverse effect on our entire operations. As uh, he, if the driver would take time to back up, that can be an unsafe practice. If he leaves the truck where it is, it can have a total effect on everything we do right from the get-go. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you that what we do, whether it's our EMS services or our fire services, time is very important. Lost time can cause loss of life. And I think that's point's been made in many things that we talk about here. But this numbering system is surely something that is very, very important. I have to say, in looking at the presentation here tonight, I personally didn't realize how bad the situation is and how many of these there are. And I, I say on behalf of the fire department and the firefighters who ser serve you that we totally support this. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, Police Department would also support this uh, continuation of this ordinance. Uh, pretty much everything's been said already, especially at night. When uh, we roll up on a specific area, we generally have a, uh, an idea of where we're at. However, when you start zeroing in, we need to see the specific uh, address number. When, the, when you shine an alley light or a spotlight, on uh, a residence that's in compliance, it just lights up, it makes it so much easier. And uh, the, the seconds are critical. Uh, not everything is a life and death emergency, but uh, uh, the, the I, I rolled up on houses where I, I, I never did find it. And it's, it was a decorative one, it blended in, it was beautiful in daylight, couldn't see it at all at night. And uh, so we would support this uh, enforcement of this ordinance. Thank you. And from the planning inspection uh, perspective, the requiring uniform number still allows for vanity without the ordinance. Uh, changes to regulate the virtually unlimited types and styles. We're much better having it. We, we, we regulate only the uniform numbering system and that is much, much easier for us in the city. The reason that we're doing this tonight is because of the 250 letters that were sent out. Uh, some of the aldermen have been getting complaints and questioning why we're doing this and uh, why are we picking on them? And there was even a question as to whether we should be changing the ordinance. And you can see the importance of keeping it like it is. And as we send out the next uh, thousand or so letters, which I'm sure we will be doing shortly um, throughout the course of the summer as we have time, when you get the calls from the, from the citizens saying, is that all the inspectors have to do? Well, that's, something, that's one thing we do have to do. It's part of our job and we're gonna continue uh, providing safety to the citizens. So I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, we're open to that. Any questions, Oliver? Thank you very much, gentlemen. You. Appreciate your time. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you again, gentlemen. Deputy Chief, thank you. And as a final note, I'd ask the Alderman to please cooperate with us. Uh, we're, there's a lot of work that needs to be done all over the city, in particular the inspections department. I ask the public to, to please bear with us and understand that we have a job to do. Again, we're not singling anybody out, just something that needs to be done. And I'm sure uh, when other letters go out, Several of you aldermen may or may not get letters. Please help us explain the importance of this ordinance. Thank you. Next one I'll touch on briefly is the city code update initiative. And this is something that's uh, derivative of the Clean City Initiative and the, the fact that the uh, house numbering ordinance has been enforced. I have had several people call, email, and actually come by and talk to me personally at my office expressing some concerns. and rightfully so, about how some of our ordinance, ordinances um, <coughs> may not make any sense at all, may need to be tweaked, may be unnecessarily punitive, may be stupid, as I've been told. That ordinance is stupid. Uh, my reaction to that, my response to that, is do exactly what we've done in the past. If, if there are citizens that are concerned about particular issues that impact their lives, 
in, in particular, the, uh, the number in uh, um, ordinance, uh, which is a quality of life issue, then we have a duty and an obligation to make sure that we set up a forum to listen to them. Um, and along those lines, I will be uh, having a, uh, an initiative where we, I will call for five public sessions and invite the public to come in and tell us where the ordinances need to be looked at, tweaked, done away with, and so forth. Uh, but I think the main thing that's going to occur from these listening sessions is that the public will better understand the, uh, the, the reasoning behind a lot of these ordinances, and it's important for us to do that. There will be five listening sessions. At, at the moment, we, we're going to be scheduling the five listening sessions at the library uh, at different times of the day. I will ask, again, uh, a member of the PD, a uh, police department, a member from the fire department, inspections department to be there uh, during the listening sessions to answer any questions. All the aldermen will be invited to attend also. Uh, if you've had uh, any constituents that have expressed concerns over uh, ordinances, please uh, uh, be present so that you can answer questions too. But it's an important initiative because I think uh, after all these years, a lot of these ordinances have been there a long time. And maybe our citizens have, have a point. Maybe some of the ordinances need to be tweaked. I know that there's one in particular that brought some concerns uh, that uh, we've already addressed with inspections department and we'll be making some tweaking in that particular ordinance and that, that deals with the clear water inspections. The clear water inspections, as you know, is coming to play now and we're doing those clear water inspections and there are instances where where perhaps the, the, uh, the ordinance does not make sense or needs to be addressed and, and, uh, and perhaps even amended or modified. So that'll be an issue to deal with when we have our listening sessions. So again, I invite the public to attend when we announce that. I invite the council to attend and anyone who has any concerns about our ordinances. Thank you. Next item, we have two hearings. Hearing number one, to change the zoning classification of property located at 1435 South 7th Street the old Optenberg site from class NR6, neighborhood, neighborhood, neighborhood residential six in UI urban industrial to class Morningstar PUD, which is planned unit development, 2006 classification. The second hearing we have is to repeal and recreate section 15.915, subsection five and six of the historic preservation regulations of the city of Sheboygan zoning code relating to the powers, duties, and procedures for designation of historic structures, historic sites, and historic districts. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council with respect to these hearings? Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to these hearings? I will ask one more time. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Alderman Sigali. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, appreciate it if a, a city attorney McLean could discuss um, the historical preservation ordinance that um, we are about to enact. If you could just explain to the citizens briefly just what this is concerning since uh, the old ordinance is so old and now we have upgraded it so that they know what is going on. City Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, be happy to Alderman Scali. The, uh, the, the primary change to the, the historic uh, preservation uh, regulations, which uh, are part of the zoning code, and that's why uh, the statute requires a public hearing on them. Uh, right now, there's, uh, there's three categories. There's historic sites, historic structures, and historic districts that are designated in the historic preservation regulations. Um, currently, and since the ordinance was adopted, uh, historic districts are uh, recommended by the Historic Preservation Commission to the council, and the council establishes the districts. But the Historic Preservation uh, Commission uh, has the power to create historic sites and historic uh, structures. And uh, a number of years ago, ran into an issue where the commission started to do that, designated some city-owned facilities as historic, and uh, you know, only, the council only found out about it later. I think Fountain Park had been designated, and uh, uh, I think the intent was to designate the, the county courthouse, and it was just done at the committee level without really any input from the council or anything. So 
what the, what the change does uh, in essence is to make all of those designations, historic sites, structures, and districts, uh, recommendations by the Historic Preservation Commission to the council, and the council then will approve those or, or uh, take, take the recommendations from the Historic Preservation Commission and decide whether to establish the historic sites, structures, and districts. And that's really, in essence, the, the change. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Are there any questions? One more time, is there anyone else who would like to address the council? There being none, President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that both hearings be closed. Second. Motion to second to close both hearings. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearings are closed. Consent agenda 24-1 through 24-23. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. For items 24-1 through 24-33, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinance. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? There being none. Oh. Alderman Bowman. No, thank you, Your Honor. 24-17, please, if I could just ask for it pulled out, please. Pull out for a separate vote, discussion? Or um, vote? Also on discussion, please. And, and vote? Uh, and Just vote. 24-17? Correct. Pulled out for a separate vote and discussion. Please proceed. On uh, this resolution, I just have a question for the Finance Committee, please. And this is the, is this fee actually legal? And the reason I'm asking that is because usually it is charged if there's a third party provider. And if we process these direct, the MasterCard Visa rules do prohibit service fees for all retailers from doing the same. So I'm just kind of wondering if this is through a third service provider. Alderman Groff, President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would um, say yes, that same question came up at, um, at uh, the Finance Committee. And um, Steve, if you want to further explain about it. Um, sure. But it's something that we can do. Attorney McLean. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't have personal knowledge of this, but I understand that the county clerk of courts, the county courthouse currently has the same uh, uh, authority and they charge 2.75%. And so all we're doing really is uh, authorizing that to do the same thing as the circuit court did <coughs> for the municipal court. They, they charge the same fee in the counties. So. Mm -hmm. I will say it was there was uh, some discussion of that at the uh, at the uh, advisory committee for the joint municipal court. Uh, Sergeant Tarkowski, I think, brought up a comment that because of the service fee, uh, it was his understanding that a lot of people don't avail themselves of using credit cards because they got to pay the extra fee. But uh, I guess that we can deal with as we go. As if uh, they feel it's not warranted to have uh, the service fee or to accept credit cards. But uh, it was felt that uh, it, it's being consistent with what's currently allowed and provided for at the county, that somebody does want to pay with credit card. It's a convenience to the, uh, the citizen. Alderman Bowen, is that OK? Thank you, sir. Alderman Susha? Thank you. I really do like the, um, the concept of allowing people to pay their fines through credit card. I think that's a great idea. Now, you mentioned that you checked with how the county is currently doing it, but did anybody call the credit card company to see if this is legal? Because I do agree with Alderman Bauman. I know that um, in a private business, you cannot charge more. So did somebody call the credit card company? Uh, I don't know, Alderman Susha. I, I did not. I, I haven't, uh, didn't have any involvement specifically in this, so no. And again, there's nothing that's being done above and beyond what the citizens are not used to doing with the county when they were paying the fines before. Uh, if there's a problem with us doing this, there certainly would have been a problem with the county doing it. Any other comments? Okay, 24-17. We'll be pulled for a separate vote. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? We need a, a motion. Oh, you need a motion, that's right. That would work. No. No. Well, you had a motion. You, want it, you don't out. want it for a separate vote? Okay, that's what we're, okay, so you just wanted to discuss it. We've got to discuss, there's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. 
Anything else? There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Okay. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communi communications and petitions. 24 through 30, 2434 to 2437, except 2436 will go to public protection and safety. They will be referred. Report of officers to 2438 by the city attorney, submitted as a matter of record, a communication by Lee Realty of Sheboygan, Inc., requesting an extension of the closing date for the sale of city-owned tax parcel number 59281-471040. President Groff. So thank you, Your Honor. I need to pull forward 2456 with that same document, though, which is the resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an amendment offer to purchase. Okay. And I'd ask for a suspension of the rules on the on the suspension uh, on the um, resolution. There's a mo uh, request to suspend the rules on 2456 as it relates to uh, 2438. Is there any objection to that? There being none, please proceed. Then, Your Honor, I'd move that the R.O. be accepted and, and filed and that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'm under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, we need to approve this this evening as uh, the original contract expires uh, March 30th, and in order to grant this um, extension, uh, we need to approve it tonight. Thank you, President Groff. Any other discussion? Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Deberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 2439 by the City Clerk, submitted as a matter of record to District Attorney's opinion referring to Anthony Bonet Ethical Review, which was received by the mayor's office on March 15, 2006. President Graff, file. Your Honor, I move that the um, R.O. be accepted and placed on file. Okay. Motion to second to accept and place on file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2440 by the library board president stating that the library board voted to make the recommendation to the common council to adopt general ordinance number 103-0506 repealing and recreating section 58-38 of the municipal code relating to the audit of vouchers for library expenditures. President Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion and a second to accept place on file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2441 lies over to April 17th. 2442 through 2455 to be referred. 2457. Uh, do we have a suspension on that one? Yeah, in the passage, yes. Who's uh, oh, President Graff? Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension on uh, this resolution. Is there any objection to suspension? There being none, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Um, just to let people know, this is to, to um, get the... Um, appropriation for acquisition planning and services appraisal for the Walmart development and this is um, something that is paid back through the um, through the Walmart corporation uh, to us so it's just to get this started as quickly as possible. Thank you President Groff. Any other discussion? <coughs> there being none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. 
Deberg and Eberg, 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2458 lies over. 2459 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 2460 will be referred back to Law and Licensing. 2461 by Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing document submitting a claim from David Gallinetti for alleged damages to his vehicle when his city snowplow struck the vehicle and paying the claim in the amount of $6,498.04. Alderman President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the claim be paid in the amount of $6,498.04. There's a motion and, and a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll, Madam Clerk. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stephan. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2462 by salary and grievance, grievances recommending filing documents submitting a communication being a press release from the Sheboygan County taxpayers stating that stating they have various concerns regarding the Sheboygan Tourism Coordinator position. Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Move to file. There's a motion to file. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor of state aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. One, one opposition. Motion carries. 2463 to 2464 to be referred. Report of committees seven. 2465 by law and licensing recommending denying the change of premises for the niche bar based upon their previous record of violations, the committee standards for permitting premise changes and a lack of evidence that they meet the statutory requirements for such a change. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Who will be accept and file report of committee? It's a motion a second to accept and file under discussion. There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Davis. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2466 by finance. Recommended filing resolution number 288-0506. By all the person Susha, requiring any city employee who plans to travel out of the state on city business must obtain approval by the Common Council. President Grau. Yeah, and I, um, I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that we file this resolution. There's, there's a motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? No. One nay. Motion carries. 2467 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 2468 by salary and grievances recommending filing resolution 258-0506 by Alderman Manny regarding the formation of a short-term committee on employee remuneration. Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Move for the filing. Second. There's a motion to second to file. Under discussion. <coughs> There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, apologize. Alderman Manny. I wanted to uh, make a statement first. Too late. Please do, the vote's been taken. Is there something? Mm. Is there any objection from the council that I'll let Alderman Manny make a statement after the vote has been taken? Mm. Please do, sir. Thank Alderman you, Manny. Um, I want to be clear too, first with a question, Filing this document then means that the request is dead, correct? I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Alderman McGraw saying yes. Yeah, that's what I understood. Uh, I want to speak on behalf of the document, although it looks like at this point in time there won't be much ability to influence uh, the council to vote otherwise. 
um, and then I was going to offer an amendment to it uh, after I was going to speak uh, on behalf of this. Um, in speaking on behalf of the resolution, huge concern in the city is the budget. And behind the conversation is the tax rate and the pressure with declining revenues from the state, et cetera. Uh, the biggest part of our problem is personnel costs, as 90% of the budget is constituted by those costs. There is a perceived problem of injustice that lives in some real measure in the city. And that perceived sense of injustice is the cost for health care, the benefit packages for public employees versus those that are basically current and present in the private sector. Uh, this resolution and such a committee would bring to the table information that would be helpful. It might point out that, in fact, um, there is a, a major discrepancy. And if so, that would be leverage in conversing with and dealing with unions in labor contract negotiations. Information, on the other hand, might suggest that reimbursement for public employees is, is quite consistent with historical norms. And if that were the case at the conclusion of this study, uh, that would be interpretively important for citizens of this city in recognizing that degree in which public employees are reimbursed. So I think this resolution is intended to bring us information. Information is power. Information is helpful. Information, I think, is good, responsive, and informed government. And that's why I would speak on, behavior, uh, on, on behalf of this resolution. And I do then move also to uh, change one term of the resolution from um, on page two at the top from July until August. OK. The, uh, the vote has been taken. In order to re readdress the issue, we would need a motion to reconsider in order to readdress it. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to reconsider um, agenda item number 2468. Second. A motion to second to reconsider. Under discussion? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Roll call. What are we voting on now? Motion to reconsider. Open up the issue again so that Alderman Manny can <coughs> formally make a motion to amend. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, an I vote would be to reconsider. Kittleson? Um, aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? 12 ayes, 4 noes. Motion passes. I'll amend it. You may make your amendment now, please. Motion to amend. Yes, I move to amend the top resolution on page 2 to change the word July to the <coughs> word August. There's a motion. Is there a second? And a second to amend accordingly under discussion? All in Susha. Um. Thank you. I, I think that this definitely needs to be done. And the reason that I voted initially to file it is because that I think that the Salary and Grievance Committee should be looking at this. Um, I don't know if there's really a need to um, create uh, another committee to look at it again. I mean, doesn't this fall under the umbrella of Salary and Grievance? Perhaps uh, the chairman could answer that question. Vice President Burke. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there are. Uh, one of our goals is to look at the uh, exempt uh, employee classification because that's the one that we have the most, if you would, flexibility with rather than uh, the union. So in, that has been a goal adopted by the Salary and Grievance Committee. Uh, but the goal does not typically uh, address comparables in private sector uh, because with the meet arb law, uh, although there are some changes planned, uh, private sector comparisons uh, don't play heavily into the meet our decision making. Thank you, Vice President Byrd. Any other questions? There being none, we will call the roll. Yeah, I just have an Does amendment. Any, any, just for all eyes for the amendment. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, state aye. 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 
Any opposed? No. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> Roll call. Okay, and I vote would be to amend from July to August. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. Ten eyes, six noes. Motion carries. On the many, like to make a motion to pass it as a mm. amended. Okay, uh, I move to accept the report of the committee and move the resolution um, be put upon its passage with the amendment. Second. There's a motion, the second, under discussion. Alderman Stefan. Um. I think it's motion. He said he's going to accept the report of the committee, and the report of the committee is to file the document. I just want to be clear. So we're voting on filing it. Right? Is that what the motion was? Yeah. Alderman Graff? Vice President Graff? That's not the motion that he may mean to um, accept, the, um, accept the report of the committee, but to pass the resolution. Right. Is that correct, Alderman Manny? Yes. So we're filing the report of committee, but we're looking at passing the resolution. Right. So we're not accepting and adopting the report of committee because the report of committee is to file mm -hmm. the resolution. So that's not what we're doing. That's, Correct. I'm, that's, that's, uh, okay. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I've always viewed the difference between accept and adopt versus accept and file. Accept is to accept the report. It's not necessarily to approve the report, accept and adopt the report is to approve the report, accept and file is to accept it, but to file it, not to uh, act on it in a positive manner. Uh, so I, I believe the motion's appropriate to accept the report from the committee. That doesn't mean you're approving or acting on the report of the committee, you're accepting that, but you're being uh, asked to vote on favorably on the resolution. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Everybody understand that? Oh, Stefan, did you wish to speak, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried that a few months ago, and I was told we couldn't vote against the report of committee. We have to put the report of committee up to a yay or nay vote. And then if we didn't like it, we could come in with another resolution. We couldn't, you know, take the report of committee that said no, and I would say I want it to be yes. And I was, I was told that was out of order. I couldn't do it. Well, Attorney McLean. That's another issue, and I, I agree with that. That's the, the, the action ought to be, that, that's correct. Uh, you took the original vote was to file this. You moved to reconsider. So really what's on the floor is the committee's recommendation. And that should be voted down if, and then uh, Alderman Manny should be allowed to make his motion to uh, pass the resolution. So I, I agree with that. Okay, let's explain that. So the motion, if, if this council wishes to pass the amendment, they need to vote down the reported committee and then Alderman Manning needs to make a subsequent motion to approve the resolution. That's, yes, Your Honor. Do you have that? Okay, everybody understand that. We have President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, <clears throat> that being the case, then I'd urge everybody to um, vote down this RC. Um, and then ultimately um, support passing the resolution. In, in the Salary and Grievances Committee, this uh, was a 2-2 two -two tie during two different votes. And then finally, um, we voted to recommend filing to the Common Council to get it out of the Salary and Grievances Committee, and then it came out 4-0 to accept and, and file. And um, at this point in time, uh, I would prefer that this committee would be enacted and we can look at these salaries. Okay. Does anybody want a roll call on the motion to file? I would like that. Roll call. A nay vote would be not to file. Yes. A, a nay vote will be to vote down the report of committee. <coughs> That's your intention? An aye is to vote to file. A nay is to vote not to file. Okay, everybody understand that. 
Thank you. Please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Manny. Nay. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. Nay. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Nay. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. And Kittleson. No. Six ayes, ten noes. Motion fails. Motion fails. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I then move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. As amended. Correct, as amended. And there's a second under discussion. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just in reference, because I think it's appropriate, is this something similar that we just did to document 2466? Do we have to vote? Because I think what we did is we voted to file, but then we accepted the resolution and adopted. Did we need it? We didn't. Okay. Just file. Same thing. Attorney McLean. Thanks. Uh, if I understood, Alderman Serta's question was on 2466 mm -hmm. that you filed the, uh, you accepted the recommendation of the committee to file okay. the document. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're back to 2468, motion to pass the resolution as amended. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Manny. Aye. Ten eyes, six noes. Motion carries. 2469 by Public Protection and Safety recommended temporarily declaring certain streets as truck routes <coughs> so as to the best protect residential neighborhoods during the Commerce Avenue reconstruction and to prevent future problems with truckers using shortcuts on non truck routes. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt the uh, report of committee and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Alderman uh, Deberg. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> this one here, I cannot support whatsoever. As we all know, not too long ago, the area of Sheridan Park was hallowed ground for all the kids that were going to be playing in the park, and we were going to protect the neighbors, the residents, and all the children in that area. So what do we do? We put heavy trucking right down the middle of the residential area, right past Sheridan Park, where all the children are going to be playing. I hope, I'm, I'm voting no on this, because if anything would happen to any child or anything in that neighborhood, at least I'll be able to sleep at night. So I'll, I'll vote no. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also will be voting no on this. I know it's only going to be a short period of time that Commerce Avenue is going to be shut down, but I also know that that's going to be the busiest time for the children to be in that area because school will be out. So um, I feel also that this is going to be a danger to the children <coughs> in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sarda, did you wish to speak? Okay, I got you. Okay, we're trying to get those lights as they blink. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, you're Your not Honor. On. I'm sorry, excuse oh. me. Alderman Serda, you're not, you're, you're not on. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, too, have concerns about traffic around Sheridan Park, but my main concern is 14th Street versus 13th Street, which is only going to be temporary. 14th Street is nothing but speeding all the time. And um, I'm sure that once this truck route, temporary truck route, starts down 13th Street, all the parents that are going to be aware that this is happening, and I'm sure they are intelligent enough to make sure their children are not playing in the road. And seeing that this is the only route that is available for the trucks to get to the docks, this is the only solution we have. And this comes from our experts from Public Works. They're the ones that 
came up with this route initially, and there's no other, other alternative unless we want to shut down May, May Line and Rock Line, which is what this will do if the trucks can't get to their docks. So I suggest that we all accept this. It's temporary, and it, should, it shouldn't cause any problems. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Mennerwheel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to say in committee that we did listen to the neighbor's concerns, and Tom Holton was there, and we uh, worked with Tom Holton to address those concerns, and we came up with solutions, and we came up with ways to slow down traffic and get the trucks to go where we want them to. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, am going to support this document because we've got three businesses down there. We can't be shutting these businesses down for several months at a time. We are doing them a service by replacing Commerce Street. As long as I can remember, I can't remember the last time, if ever, that Commerce Street has actually been worked upon. It's a, it's a problem down there. I hate taking my car down there. It seems like it's ready to fall apart just driving my car down that street. But those neighbors down there are good businesses. They provide a lot to this community. As a matter of fact, almost $190,000 worth of taxes between all of the various different businesses down there. We need to take care of our businesses in this community. We can't be shutting them down. We can't be saying, look, we got to look out for one street because some of the kids may be hurt because they're running the street. It'll adjust. The kids will adjust and be able to work with this. Safety is my concern as well, but business is also my concern. We need to take care of our local businesses because Frankly, folks, they're the people that take care of us every day when we get uh, paid so we can go out and spend our money and pay our taxes and everything else. So I'll support this document. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay, we will call the roll. Madam City Clerk. Montemayor. Aye. Ratke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. Excuse me? Thank you. D. Berg, no. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 12 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Report of committee 92470 by Public Works recommended repealing and recreating section 74 2 of the municipal code relating to the establishment of parks and passing the substitute ordinance. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I would move then that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted and that the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think this is a, a great uh, motion that we're working on this evening. However, I do have an amendment. Section 3, I would like a motion to add a new Section 3, and I would like it to read. Any amendment to this ordinance must be passed by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. And that would make section three being section number four. Does that make sense, what I just said? Motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, uh, Alderman uh, Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with Alderman Montemayor. This is a very... Um, serious matter our parks and seeing that we do have people in this community that really don't understand the value of our park system and maybe they just see things differently but our parks are very very um, important to our city and our people and I think if we make it as hard as we can to take a park it's in the best interest of all the people in this community thank you thank you Alan Meyer Alderman Graf, President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm curious about this amendment. Uh, up in section one, the um, second last sentence says, the recommendation of the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission to the Public Works Committee to take a park for any non-park use must be approved by the Public Works Committee and confirmed by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. Isn't that the same as the amendment? No, because that particular clause can be changed by a majority of the council any time. And it defeats that purpose. Oh, okay. right. Does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. When you have a three-fourths vote closed like that, a lot of times it becomes symbolic because a majority of the council can come back and change it any time. But if you require a three-fourths vote and then a three-fourths vote to amend, then that locks it in. Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Aaron. I guess I will vote against this because 
for me, in order to establish a three-quarters vote by a majority, we should have a three-quarters vote to, uh, to, uh, to pass the document. Uh, a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, I think when we looked at recent contractual matters between the library director and the library board, one of the things that stood out would be a 100% of that particular board needing to vote for a particular incident. I think that stood out uh, very clearly. Uh, any change in this um, ordinance, I guess, for example, we have had a park board uh, in the past that uh, for a number of reasons apparently the council did away with. Uh, we could not do away with the, the park board without having a three-quarters vote, for example, of the, uh, of the council to change this ordinance. I don't know, and I guess a question for Attorney McLean, how many ordinances do we have on the books that you're aware of that are like this, that require if you would, the supermajority or the three-quarter uh, vote to change any of our ordinances. Attorney McLean. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> the only votes I'm aware of that uh, require three-quarters, there was one at one time uh, uh, I believe to, uh, to change if you're going to change the table of organization, it would require a uh, some sort of a study, uh, and that study would require a three-quarters vote. Or there was some provision we had in there for a short period of time. Generally, uh, supermajority votes are uh, are set by statute. There are certain provisions that require more than a majority vote, but typically Robert's Rules of Order and our rules of uh, procedure call for amendment to be made by a majority vote. Uh, there are some special voting requirements uh, that are statutory. Uh, zoning amendments where somebody files a protest requires three quarters of all members. Uh, establishment of fuel depots in a city require a three quarter vote of all members. Uh, uh, acceptance of budget procedures, detachment of territory, um, those are all statutory. So, uh, you know, it is a concern when you start changing the, uh, the rules of procedure for particular documents. Uh, I think an amendment, I think you could, uh, from a legal standpoint, probably amend this to require amendments to need a three-quarter vote. But I would uh, question, for instance, uh, I don't believe you could establish in here that <clears throat> it would require a three-quarter vote to repeal this, because uh, repeal or rescind under Robert's Rules of Order is, is a call for a majority vote and not uh, uh, a supermajority. Uh, one one way you could get, uh, you know, perhaps a, a better way to get a supermajority would uh, provide for a charter ordinance. You could do that. If you have a charter ordinance, that requires a two-thirds vote to repeal. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm hesitating a little bit because uh, I guess I'm concerned about adopting this with that three-quarter vote requirement to amend it. And I'm not uh, sort of caught off guard here, but I'm a little concerned about being able to do that and how that uh, relates to Robert's rules and, and our own rules of procedure. Thank you, Attorney McLean. My, my understanding is that although the Robert Rules of Order calls for a simple majority, Robert Rules of Order sets a minimum of the vote. It doesn't set up a cap. It doesn't say you cannot allow a three-quarters vote. Um, although it's a serious thing to, allow, to require a three-quarters vote, I can guarantee you it's a serious thing to mess around with parks and start taking parks. And this is a message that this council needs to send so that we can assure this community that our parks are never again going to be threatened. This is extremely important, Council, that we pass this resolution as amended. The message has to be consistent that this Council is sensitive and jealously protects our green space, our parks. 
It's not impermissible, it's not illegal to require three quarters votes. The rules present to you at least the minimum. It can happen. And if we are serious about protecting our parks, and then I ask you to please approve this with the amendment. Anybody else? Please call the roll. We first got an all eyes on the amendment and then do the final yes. vote. So do you want to do a roll call on the amendment? Roll call on the amendment. Okay, everybody understand what we're voting on? No, I'm seeing shaking heads. We're voting on the amendment. Um, to create the new section three to read, I believe, Alderman Montemayor, any change in the ordinance requires a three quarters vote of the Common Council. Is that basically what you were? Yes. Thank you. An aye vote would be to allow the amendment. Just Radke, excuse me? I, just to clarify, that, Alderman Montemayor, then the current section three would become section four. You're not proposing to delete no. the existing right. one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Please continue. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. No. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. And Montemayor. Aye. Eight eyes. One, two, three. And eight no's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Eight ayes, eight noes. Tie It's an easy one for me. I motion passes. As a, a, amendment passes. Now I'd ask for a motion to pass as amended. Would you please, Alderman Montemayor? Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the, um, the ordinance for getting recreating section 72 4 of the municipal code related to the establishment park be put upon its passage. As amended. As amended. Yes, second. Any discussion? President Groff. Thank you, but it's, um, I believe it's the substitute of that general ordinance, not the general ordinance. Yes. That's right. Thank you all, President Groff. Please call the roll. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. No. Eberg. Aye. Excuse me? You said aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Radke. Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2471 by finance recommended repealing and recreating section 5838 of the municipal code relating to audit of vouchers for library expenditures. President Rao. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and we pass the general ordinance. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to make a small amendment to the um, ordinance. Um, at the end of the second line, it says, or schedules. Um, I would just like to remove that. So what that would mean is that the library would have to forward all the vouchers, um, and they don't have the option of forwarding the schedule. That way, all the vouchers could be looked at by our finance department so we can see that the bills actually truly do exist. Was there a second to that amendment? I mean, to that motion? Second. Under discussion on the amendment only, changing one word. There being none, does anybody want a roll call or a voice vote? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion to put forth as amended. Holman Gruff. Um, I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the general ordinance as amended be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion. <coughs> there being none, please. Uh, uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, I'm a little slow on the switch here, but the, uh, the language or schedules covering the same uh, is statutory language. Uh, that, that came right out of the statutes. Uh, and I guess at this point, I would recommend that you conform to the statutory language, but uh, I think you can you make the, uh, you've amended it, so you've taken that out. I think you can adopt this without that language in there, but that language w was in because that was the language that was in the statute. 
Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Attorney McLean, could we substitute the word and for the word or? Can we do that much? Attorney McLean. Well, yeah, and I think you can delete the schedules as well. All, all I'm suggesting is if you want to be consistent with the statutory language, uh, it would be okay to leave in the or schedules. I mean, that's the statute allows uh, vouchers or the schedules covering the same to be reviewed by the library board. Uh, I think you can take that out, you change it to and if you wish, um, you could make those changes. So, uh, you know, there's nothing illegal about doing that, but you're then getting away from the strict, uh, uh, strictly following the language of the statute. We have all Thank you. I think perhaps then I would like to make a motion. Hold on, hold on, excuse me. Hold on. Okay. Thank you, Your oh, Honor. Okay. Then I think I would like to make the motion to leave the word schedules in there and simply make forward the vouchers and schedules covering the same. Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. Do you wish, wish to withdraw yours at all to? Well, what the city attorney is saying is that we can make it more restrictive and that's not illegal? I don't believe it's illegal. Okay, because I think you can make a statute more restrictive, you just can't make a statute more liberal. So I'd like to just take a vote on it to see where it goes. We want to withdraw your? Yes. Okay. Madam City Clerk. Alderman Susha, can you just clarify for me? Because I have, when you made the motion to change, did you say to change or to and, and that was all you were doing? What was your motion? Um, my motion was to remove or schedules. Or, or schedules and just replace it and not replace it at all. Okay. So they just have to send the vouchers to the finance department to prove that the bills actually do exist. And that's a great precaution to take. Alderman Serta, did you wish to speak, ma'am? Thank you. Alderman Stephan, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, last week, the Finance Board met with the Library Board. I thought we had good discussion on a lot of different issues, and, and this didn't come up. It sounds logical, but I don't know that what, you know, I'd like to know what the ramifications of it are for the Library Board. So I guess I would ask that we refer it back to the uh, joint meeting between the Finance Committee and the Library Board. So I think, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't cause any more paperwork than we're, you know, trying to save. There's no harm in that, Alderman Susha. Do you have any objection to that, referring it back? No. Would you like to withdraw your motion to amend? I withdraw my motion and recommend we refer it back. To Thanks. finance and yeah. library board? they got to meet with us three times a year anyways. <laughs> <laughs> President Graff. I, didn't we already pass the, Your Honor, didn't we already pass the amendment? Yes. So No, we didn't. The no, first amendment, we did. We have an all eyes on the remove the or schedules. Then it'll, then it'll, but we're just sending the whole thing back. So there's no reason for Alderman Susha to withdraw her no. motion because that's already then been acted on. Right. Okay. Was there a second to refer? Was there a second to refer, Alderman Susha? Second. Second. Thank you, Alderman Berg. All those in favor, referring it back. State aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Matters laid over. 2325 RO number 6120506 oh, oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending repealing and recreating section 15915 subsection 5 and 6 of the Historic Preservation Regulation of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance relating to the powers, duties, and procedures for designation of historic structures, historic sites, and historic districts. And this has been addressed by our City Attorney McLean during the uh, public hearing. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept and adopt the report of officer and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sagali? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries.
2326, RO number 613 by the City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property located at 1435 South 7th Street, the old Optenburg site from Class R, from Class NR6 Neighborhood Residential and UI Urban Industrial to Class Morning Star PUD Plan Unit Development 206 Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. And Stefan? 16 eyes. Motion carries. 2327, RO number 6140506 by the Historic Preservation Commission recommending approval of General Ordinance number 950506 relative to repealing and recreating section 15, 915, subsection 5 and 6 of the Historic Preservation Regulation of the City of Sheboygan, zoning ordinance relating to the powers, duties, and procedures for the designation of historic structures, historic sites, and historic districts. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the R will be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion and a second to accept and place on file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2346, resolution number 2830506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, Davis, authorizing a transfer of appropriation in the 206 budget. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. This motion to second. Under discussion. There being none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2374, General Ordinance 950506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor, amending General Ordinance number 90506 relating to the no parking prohibitions to change, end quote, add a no parking school days only 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with arrow pointing west, 40 feet west, end quote. To read, start quote, add a no parking school School days only 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with arrows pointing west, 40 feet east, end quote. The change from west to east of the curb lines of South 16th Street along the north side of Wilson Avenue. <coughs> Alderman Manuel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll move to put the ordinance upon its passage. The motion to second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. There be a non. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Graf, Kittleson, Manny, Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, and Van Akron. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2472 will go to a special committee on risk management. 2473 will be referred to public works. 2474 will go to public protection and safety. 2475 will go to finance. 2476, a resolution by Alderman Groff authorizing the issuance and providing for the sale of $3 million general obligation promissory notes series 2006A and $1,400,000 general obligation promissory notes series 2206B, TIF number six, and providing other details with respect thereto. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this involves the, um, the selling of the um, debt issuance for um, the capital improvements program for 2006. Thank you, President Groff. There being no other discussion, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, 
Van Akron aye. and Vanderwill. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 2477 is a resolution authorizing entering into a contract for the 2006 Portland Cement Concrete Paving Program and the Sheboygan Business Center Detention Pond Expansion, bid number 2299. That will be referred to Public Works. 2478 is a communication from Jenny Dahlman stating her concerns regarding the rules about reptile ownership in Sheboygan. As she was searching the internet for different sites about Sheboygan, I found one site disturbing, showing small children with reptiles and pictures of reptile shows and asking that this group be shut down. That will be referred to public protection and safety. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. <laughs>